Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. And sitting a high uh, <laughs> above us all, top of the kingdom, Maria Lawrence. <laughs> Good morning. Or is it Queendom? Queendom. Queendom. There you go. Top of the Queendom. <laughs> I like but, my high chair. But she handles it so well, Rob. She dominates us both. She's a benevolent she, dictator. She's a benevolent dictator. <laughs> and But lets us know about I it. I don't think my we, family would agree yeah, with that, we, but okay. Uh, we can you only just, go so far before we lease that lease is jerked yeah, on us. Pull, we have to go pull back. Pull back. Pull back. I get you. Proverbial shock collar. <laughs> <laughs> 8.38 as we welcome in Steve Roberts, president of the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce. Steve, good morning to you, sir. Rob, good morning, and good morning to my friends, Bill and Maria. It's nice to hear your voices again. I uh, hope all are well uh, over your way. Very well. So you are one of the great promoters of the state of West Virginia and its business, uh, climate, and economy. Steve, I have to tell you, in the many interviews we've done with you, you are always overwhelmingly positive about things. I have to congratulate you on that. Rob, thank you. You're very welcome. Bill, you got some work to do. (laughs) (laughs) I kid kid because I love. Yeah, we'll just have Steve talk the whole time. That'll make everybody much happier. (laughs) Nonsense, Bill. (laughs) Hey, uh, Steve, does the chamber endorse political candidates? Well, the chamber PAC does. We have a political action committee uh, that has been around for uh, now over 30 years. And so through our political action committee, we endorse. Uh, I'll, I'll just add quickly that we have uh, quite a quite a process. We ask our members for their input, and we have several committees that take a look at the recommend uh, the recommendations for um, political action committee endorsements uh, before we actually endorse. So um, <laughs> we, we, we don't do it by, I think I heard some conversation about having a queendom. And uh, yes. Maria, we don't do it by having a queendom. We, um, this is a very uh, small D uh, democracy process. <laughs> That's how we do it. And uh, it's worked pretty well for us over the, the years that we've done it. And, and how do you, real quick, Bill, if you don't mind, uh, yeah. how do you distinguish between the chamber and its pack when it comes to endorsements, though? So um, the um, chamber leaders, the members of the executive committee, um, serve as the members of the pack, And it's really a compliance issue. Uh, the pack has to solicit a different kind of money than the chamber uh, so the chamber um, thrives on uh, income from small business and uh, companies and employers. The PAC thrives on income from individuals and um, partnerships. But in our case, about 100% of the money comes from individuals. So the distinction is not company money, not corporate money, but individual money. So if I, if I see a candidate saying I'm endorsed by the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce, which I have seen, should, right. I, should I take that as a tacit endorsement from Steve Roberts and company or just from the PAC? <laughs> Actually, technically, it would be an endorsement from the PAC. The PAC. Okay. Now, let me yeah. ask you a question flowing from that, because this is the first time I've heard this, and it's mm-hmm. happened this year in this primary election that further right Republicans are claiming that the chamber endorsement effectively is naming who the liberal Republicans are versus who the really conservative Republicans are. And if you get a chamber (laughs) endorsement, if you're a chamber of commerce Republican, you're a liberal Republican, you're a rhino, you're not really a Republican. This is what I'm hearing from the far right conservative wing of the Republican Party. Has this made its way back to you? And if it has, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, Rob, we've seen some of the, some of this appears on social media. And yes, we have seen some of those charges. And what I would say is, oh, my goodness, uh, the people that the chamber has endorsed have voted for some of the most pro-business. Uh, and, and frankly, I will use the the word conservative um, legislation in the country. They have lowered taxes. They have reduced regulations. They have helped rein in lawsuits. You know, I find it a real irony that some of the people who are who are saying um, the chamber is a, um, a rhino organization are being funded by trial lawyers that sue businesses and sue our neighbors. 
And if you take a look at their finance reports, some of the people who are saying this, this is exactly who is funding them. So I would accuse them of having sold out to the dark side. And is your, you know, Patrick Henry said, is, is life uh, so dear? And I would say, is holding office so dear that you want to sell out uh, to the people who are suing your neighbors and suing our small businesses and suing our companies out of business in West Virginia? That's who's funding uh, some of the people who are calling the Chano the chamber, a, um, a rhino organization. So, you know, we're willing to fight back. We we didn't ask for this fight. What we want is to improve West Virginia's economy, to make the way of life better here for everybody. We want to see people have better health, better education. We are the leading education reform proponent in our state. Um, without question, we are the tallest tree in the forest when it comes to uh, important changes that need to be made in the way we educate our children. That's a whole topic. I'd love to get into to it with you sometime. Our public schools are not getting the job done the way we need to get it done for the 21st century. And um, it's, um, it's sim- I guess I would conclude by saying if you ain't got nothing else to say, I guess you can say that. Bill? Yeah, uh, Rob came at my question with a more elegant uh, uh, presentation. But my statement Thank was... Thank you, Bill. Yeah, my statement was, <laughs> we all we always hear first among equals. And in my view, the, the Chamber's endorsement is the most influential among equals. So you have to take it very, very serious. Uh, I, you're going to share with us who your endorsements are, I hope? Well, we our, our PAC is in the process of... of uh, of uh, completing its endorsements, so we have not finished. We have, um, in in your area, as an example, we have announced our endorsements um, in state senate races. So we are um, we are supporting the uh, conservative leader of the West Virginia State Senate, uh, Craig Blair. We are conserve. Uh, we are supporting uh, Paul Espinosa. Excuse me, I don't want to lose my voice here. In his bid for the state Senate, because we have found him to be uh, a conservative voice who um, will uh, work within the, with the team to get things done. And uh, working with the team to get things done uh, is extremely important. So uh, we've endorsed um, Pam Brush in the 97th District. We've endorsed uh, um, Wayne Clark in the 99th district. We've endorsed Chuck Horst in the 95th, uh, Michael Hornby in the 93rd. So we've we've gotten a long way, but we are still looking. We have over 500 races to look at, so uh, we have a few that we're still working on and taking a look at. How about the governor's race? We have not endorsed in the governor's race. Let me speak to that for just a moment. Um, two of the candidates are members of the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce, and the other two we have a long history of working with and working very well with. So what we attempt to do, of course, is speak for our members, and we can speak for our members when we have consensus. And what we are finding is that um, people are divided um, in these in, in certain races. They're also, by the way, just uh, you didn't ask the question, but I'll, I'll jump there real quickly. They're also divided in the Secretary of State's race. And what I would say is that's a, probably a compliment to the candidates, and it's probably a compliment to West Virginia that we have such well-qualified people um, running um, in these races that really we, we feel we don't have to sort out the, the good from the bad. Say that again, Bill. The auditor race. The one J.B. McCall. The auditor race, we have endorsed uh, Eric Householder. Mm-hmm. Eric Householder is, uh, has been one of the most conservative and pro-business voices in the West Virginia legislature consistently. Uh, he has uh, operated uh, a small business. He's a hardworking man who has um, uh, just so many things going for him. The auditor's race is very, very, uh, the auditor, the auditor position is very, very important. And we want someone who is highly qualified and very uh, much experienced in that role. And we have, without reservation, 
um, given that endorsement to um, Eric Householder. And I will endorse Eric, too, in the sense that he replaced my air conditioning system last uh, <laughs> summer and did a great job. And you stay good. How about, well, how, he has a reputation for running a very fine small business. Yeah, tight so, ship there, tight yeah. ship. How about the Attorney General's op- opposition office? We, we have um, uh, concluded an endorsement in that race, and we have gone with J.B. McCuskey. J.B. had... Um, uh, pretty much a 100% pro-business voting record when he was in the legislature. Uh, he also um, has done a magnificent job as our state auditor. Um, people around the country come and look at the work that J.B. McCuskey has done in, in uh, making the auditor's office one of the very best uh, in the nation. And um, so we found it pretty easy to get there. We did take some time. Uh, Mike Stewart is somebody we know and have worked with on a number of issues. Um, we did take some time and really listen to our members on this, but um, the experience that J.B. McCuskey has and the job that he has done both in the legislature and uh, as the auditor made him the clear choice in that race. And then- uh, U.S. Senate. I was I was okay, just I'm going sorry. there. Maria is yeah. asking that question. You have sent it. Maria, That's right. It's nice but, to hear your voice. Yeah, just, yeah. It's not easy it's, getting it in. It is not, and sometimes I just sit. Um, well, <laughs> the queen needs to speak. So, okay. Uh, you know. But actually, Bill took my question yeah. in the national, so to speak, the national races, the U.S. Senate, second congressional district. Um, what about those? Does the chamber so take? So we have endorsed. Um, we have endorsed. Uh, on behalf of Riley Moore and Carol Miller. The Senate races our members are still looking at. Again, the process is ongoing, so we haven't, uh, we haven't gotten to all the races, um, and, um, uh, and that one is still under review. Thank you. Talking with Steve Roberts. He is the president of the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Steve, as you look at the most recent 60-day session, it was a fairly quiet session, uh, a couple of pieces of legislation here and there, but uh, certainly nothing uh, like last year's. Was there anything from that session that you take out as a Chamber of Commerce president to say this is uh, something that was good for West Virginia business? Yes, we, we, did, we feel we did see um, more progress in this session. And, you know, let me give you a little bit of a, what it was like under the dome. Um, th- there was um, a lot of, uh, and this happens frequently in election years, there was a lot of election year posturing, um, but we worked well with um, most of the people in the legislature. Um, we had some very good B&O tax uh, clarification that uh, came out of this session of the legislature. We got set up uh, to do um, additional child care legislation. Now, we had to put we in the when I say we, I'm speaking broadly. The legislature and we agreed that that needed to be put on hold until we get the budget issues sorted out. Those issues are getting sorted out uh, pretty quickly. You know, it, it came up late in the session that um, there's a 450 million dollar question uh, about money that. Uh, we might owe to the U.S. Department of Education. I think the governor and his team and the Craig Blair's team have done a good job of getting to the bottom of that, and it looks like we're not going to have to repay that um, money to the feds, which means we will have the money to do the child care legislation. So we're, we're very, very interested in the child care legislation. Some of your listeners may be wondering, well, what's that got to do with business or what's that got to do with the Chamber of Commerce? Let me just say real quickly, people can't work if they don't have child care. And um, we, we want child care for all the right reasons. We want children to have the very, very best way. You know, our West Virginia children are just as good as children in any other state, and they deserve to have the very, very best education. They deserve to have the very, very best start on their lives, and we want them to have um, every opportunity for a uh, child care boost that they can possibly get. And um, so we're looking forward to working with the legislature when they are called back, probably in May. Um, we know it'll be before the 1st of July, but probably in May uh, to um, uh, pass legislation that will create even more child care opportunities in West Virginia. And we feel very, very strongly about this one. 
um, because we we run into a lot of working people who say I have to uh, I have to shorten my working hours. I can't maybe um, take a promotion or uh, work full time or so forth because of child care issues. We really really want to help in that regard. Anybody who's gone through this knows that child care is expensive, and of course. We want our children to have the very, very best opportunities um, in life, and that starts at an early age. Um, and, the, and frankly, the earlier um, we get them and get them into a program where they get good nutrition um, and where they are cared for by a caring uh, adult and where they begin to learn things, they do better. So um, we we uh, we care passionately about this, and we're going to be very involved in this on a going forward basis. Steve, the March Consumer Price Index information just came out within the last half hour here, and the CPI gained four tenths for the month, which puts the twelve month inflation rate at three point five percent. Markets have reacted negatively, as you might guess. Futures yeah. markets are selling off pretty strongly now, down one percent, one and a half percent. Is this something that you see as an issue in the state of West Virginia for its economy going forward over the next 12 to uh, 24 months? Rob, it is potentially, um, and uh, probably on a number of fronts. One, uh, of course, we don't want to have runaway inflation, and that is what the uh, Federal Reserve System is uh, worried about and trying to rein in. Uh, two, we want – we. We, we saw an economy that grew very well with in a low interest rate environment. What is fascinating about this whole subject is that despite efforts to slow down the economy, our, our country and at this point our state have um, very robust economic growth. So on the one hand, we have a growing economy. We have an economy that's creating a lot of jobs. Um, we have an economy in which particularly and, – and let me be kind of careful on how I say this – but we have an economy in which particularly the investor class, people who own stocks and bonds, have done very, very well. Um, so um, we're, we're watching this very carefully. Uh, West Virginia is a goods-producing state. That's a – just as um, education would be a whole topic for us at some point, so would the topic of being a goods-producing state. And um, as a goods-producing state, that means export is very important to our economy, and that um, and 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 export and inflation can be closely tied together. So um, it it is an important topic and one we are paying very close attention to. Steve, uh, looking at your web page, uh, uh, the bipartisan uh, infrastructure bill that was passed a couple, three years ago uh, received quite a bit of criticism. I think the word because it's bipartisan received criticism. Uh, okay. You advocate, though, it was a real boom to West Virginia. Would you elaborate on that? Yes, sir. Um, and thank you for that. We um, we initially had, uh, and I want to be quick to say, we initially had some reservations. And um, if you had if you had left it to us, we would have done things differently. So I'll start from there. But um, here's where we are. The bill passed, um, and so once the bill has passed, I think what you do is you go in and look at it and you say, okay, um, this is now the law of the land. So are we going to uh, are we going to turn our back on it, or are we going to face it and get from it what we can? And what we are seeing. Um, repeatedly is investment in West Virginia. Now, I did see a table the other day. I'd have to I'd have to dig a little deeper on this to quote it exactly. I did see a table the other day that some of the other states are getting more benefit from the IRA than West Virginia is. But um, we, uh, nonetheless. We have seen um, new investments, particularly in the energy space, the natural gas space, uh, the renewable energy space, and to some extent even in the coal space um, as a result um, of, of uh, passage of that piece of federal legislation. So, again, we, um, Bill, it would be an exaggeration for me to say we saw it as lemons and decided to make lemonade. 
But um, we we did feel that well, it's the it's now the law of the land. It's passed. It's in the process of happening. Let's help figure out um, what West Virginia can get out of it. Yeah, uh, you actually uh, took a different tack, a uh, different road that I was asking. But what I'm assuming, what I think I'm hearing from you, uh, West Virginia's benefited both from the uh, Inve- uh, Inflation Reduction Act as well as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're exactly right. I did. I talked about a completely different uh, piece of legislation. The the, um, the Infrastructure Act we did support and thank you yeah thank you for bringing me back to earth on that my apologies i got completely off uh, topic um the bipartisan infrastructure act is was supported by uh governor justice it was supported by uh at at that time we had four um uh we had five uh, members of uh congress and uh four of them supported the um that uh, piece of legislation and you know if this helps us get uh quarter h finished if it helps us um get development um i I saw yesterday the governor was um was um, in your part of the state to make uh, an announcement related to route nine which we've long been interested in uh if we can begin to fix some of those problems as a result of uh, our uh, passing an infrastructure bill, we're all for that. As you know, uh, uh, West Virginia has been identified as uh, one of those places that has many bridges that are aging out and in need of substantial repair uh, or replacement, uh, and we'll, we'll begin to see that happen. In our part of the world here, um, and I realize we're really a good many hours away by car, but in our part of the world here, we are seeing a lot of highway construction. Uh, we see we see engineers out uh, measuring and surveying. So we we know things are beginning to really happen as a result of that. Steve, I want to thank you very much for your time today. Was there anything else you wanted to get out that we didn't get a chance to cover? Well, let me just say thank you for you know um, your show gets talked about um, in a lot of places where I go. You have a an audience that's a very important audience. You uh, thank you for having me on. Frankly, I'm honored that you would have me on your show, Maria. It's uh, you know we had met a number of years ago when um, you were. Um, still um, with the newspaper. So it's just great to catch up with all of you. I hope you're well. Stay well. And um, we're making progress in West Virginia. Our point of view would be we, we're heading in the right direction. We'd like to speed it up a little bit, but at least we're going in the right direction. And we've got a lot of ideas about how to get there faster. Steve, I want to thank you for all those kind words. You don't owe me money or anything, do you? <laughs> just is there something else going on around no, here? No, listen, I'm very sincere. That I look, I like to have a sense of humor and joke about things, but I'm very sincere about that. Thank you for the public service you're providing. Thank you, Steve. We always appreciate your availability, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Have Thanks, a great Steve. day. Have a great day. Thank Steve. you. You too. Bye bye.